Hi, this is Shady and today I will discuss a very special figure in the history of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, someone that is seldom mentioned and they deserve their own story to be told. It's George Gracie or the Red Cat, um, someone that I have mentioned in many of my videos, whether it is the Ono Brothers challenges where George did his own thing separately from Carlos and Elio, or Giorgi Geo Omori or Takeo Yano, someone that is always in the backseat of a particular story. So today I will talk about the fourth born Gracie brother. I will talk about his life, his upbringing, his fight challenges, and his falling out with Elio and Carlos Gracie, and thus, in a way, creating his own, I would like a Gracie lineage, a separate Gracie lineage. So today we will do all of that but before that i would like to talk to you about today's sponsor today's sponsor is josh simon he is a helson gracie black belt currently teaching at the gracie ohio we both share a passion for history and thus he created his own line of historical t-shirts of forgotten pillars of jiu-jitsu like yacinto ferro donato pires gioji jeo uh, omori and of course, uh, because of the topic of today, George Gracie, a t-shirt that is now available on the website. And of course, historical articles of jiu-jitsu, uh, where you can go and read about these great masters and pillars of jiu-jitsu history. He is currently shipping in the US, but you can easily reach him through his website. And of course, you can reach some sort of agreement. So uh, I urge you to go to the website if you are interested in purchasing t-shirt or simply to have a good read um, the George Gracie article is extensive so obviously you can go and read it quietly alone uh, I'm gonna talk about his life story in general uh, his challenges are very long so you can also go and read it on his website so back to the video so why is George so rarely mentioned or not in the quote-unquote general narrative so it's very similar to Jacinto Ferro, Donato Pires, Gio Omori, Takeriano. Um, he is just simply not suitable for the narrative. So kind of like saying, you know, Maeda taught Carlos. Carlos was his prized pupil. But now we know that the story is far more complex. Same with all these other masters that later came in and contributed. Um, and then you would learn of, you know, the feeble weak younger brother that by accident taught and he was actually a great teacher and then took over his brother Carlos now we know that you know a lot of the story is far more romantic and far more appealing but the truth is far more complex and the complexity of course includes George Gracie so George Gracie was actually born in 1911 after his brother Carlos, who was nine, Oswaldo, seven, and Gastao Jr., who was five years old, and two years before Elio was born. So he is, uh, he was still very young to train at Maeda Academy. So when Carlos was still training at Jacinto Ferro's Academy, George was still a baby, very similar to Elio. So uh, around the time where the Gracie family moved to north of Brazil, to Rio, um, and separated from Belém, is when he most likely started training judo. So between the year of 1922, after they left for economic reasons, and 1928, when the, they reunited with uh, Donato Pires dos Reis. So between those two years is when um, George Gracie started learning under his brother Carlos, and of course, his older brother. So um, he went on to train and he was very much talented and he was very passionate about training so much so that when Pires opened his first academy in 1930, Carlos was the assistant or the main assistant instructor. But Carlos never chose these older brothers like Oswaldo and Gestao, but rather he chose George to be his, uh, well, significant uh, helper or assistant or monitor what we now call today coach um, so that shows that not only he was talented but also very much present in the training and also in the teaching uh, area as well so uh, 
Um, keep in mind, Donato Pires was also a hand-to-hand -hand fighting instructor, so he could not be at the academy all the time, hence why Carlos played a big uh, role. So he began his professional fighting career at the age of 19 years old back in 1930, and he fought up until the age of 42 in 1953. So um, his uh, fight challenges are very much like his... Oh, I'm sorry his challenge list is rather extensive you can go on the website and read it for yourself i'm not gonna just sit here and regurgitate it but however there is one particular event that changed the history of jiu-jitsu and that is december 3rd 1931 where he challenged uh, in a valley tudo style match mario alexo mario alexo is actually the first brazilian to open a jiu-jitsu academy in 1913 even before Maeda arrived and supposedly started training. So he challenged Mario Alexo and beat him, finishing him off with an arm lock in the second round. And that ushered a new uh, era of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu instructors that came from hard training and challenges rather than just theoretical and intellectual, kind of like the old Japanese slash Mario Alexo. So... Uh, he went on to challenge many others so he was a little bit different than Carlos and Elio while Carlos and Elio would negotiate a lot of these fighting rules for their advantages or sometimes just refuse certain matches and we saw this trend even up until very recently with the whole Hoist Sakuraba or Hoist uh, Yoshida uh, matches um, Carlos and Elio would have this, however, George would just take whatever fight you would throw in his face, regardless if it is Valley Tudo, no gi, grappling, uh, just uh, or classical judo or jujitsu match. So he would go on and have tons and tons of challenges, uh, again, the including very noticeable people like Orlando Americo da Silva, also known as Dudu. Euclidus Hatem, also known as Tattoo, and many others. So uh, later on, he would go on and fight for, for example, when there are uh, fighting events, a lot of people would fight like a very long fight, while George would fight uh, two, three, uh, kind of like participate in tournaments. So he was very agile, very strong, and very offensive. Um, for example, the, the difference between him and Elio that Elio was very defensive and very patient in his game. And I think we've discussed this many times. For example, Ono throwing him 30 plus times while George was very much offensive against Ono. Um, so here you see like the, the concept of tiring out someone uh, and then striking like Elio was very much different. But George was very much offensive. So... Um, Here's how the falling out with his brothers, Carlos and Elio, happened. So, the first one is the disagreement uh, with the fixed fight and professional wrestling. While uh, George participated in a lot of those with people like Omori, uh, Takeo Yano, and many others, uh, Elio would straight up refuse to have this, only to have uh, real fights. So, this is something that I actually really respect Elio for doing. He kept it real 100%, even though it was a way to really, um, you know, promote your school, have like a legitimate technical fight, but nonetheless, it was fixed. So, you just avoid injuries and at the same time promote yourself and your uh, opponent. And it's a good way to make money, schedule many rematches etc um, he would also be very famous for cross training that was also a like a made him on bad terms with carlos for example he cross trained with or like i said dudu um takeo yano geo omori Vald, even valdemar santana um, so it was a little bit kind of like uh halls gracie in terms of the older generation where he cross trained he really uh, experimented he he was really had a different fighting styles than his brothers so uh, he really is kind of like a Hulse Gracie but the previous generation in my opinion obviously not the same but you know what I mean so uh, later on he had the rivalry with the Ono brothers I will link it I had a whole video about it I will link it as a pinned comment also with Takeo Iano a partnership and also uh, very friendly challenges so 
Later on in his life in 1947, he would go back to Sao Paulo and working as a director in the fight business. The first um, gig that he took was actually director of a fighting show called Empresa Internacional de Lutas or International Fight Company. Um, it was a big uh, point in his career. He would change uh, several organizations like in 1948 he would go to become the director of Empresa Metropolitana de Esportes or Metropolitan Sports Company. Please excuse me if I'm pronouncing the Portuguese wrong. I'm trying my best. So uh, in the 1950s, he would uh, run his own promotion in uh, also returning to Rio and starting his own academy in 1953. So uh, during that time, he would fight the prized uh, pupil of Carlos and Elio called Pedro Emeterio. Uh, he was 41 years old in 19... The, the match took place in 1952 in December 13. So uh, obviously George, who was far older than Pedro, lost and that really ushered the Gracie Academy uh, into stardom and also the rivalry. Another thing that had them falling out was actually him starting his own uh, academy in Rio called George Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Like I said, like a separate Gracie lineage in a sense, and that also really uh, made things a little bit worse. So um, he lost, like I said, again to Pedro. He was mounted and finished off with a choke in a Jiu Jitsu match. Um, so later on, um, he got his 10th uh, tenth degree belt. Um, there was some reconciliation obviously uh, his students from the George Gracie Academy would go on and have Gracie challenges with the Gracie Academy and later on they did reconcile later in life um, he became a red belt later on uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, during his while he was alive or after his passing but he passed away in 1991 just two years before the start of the UFC so this is a very rich and uh, live, uh, this is a very rich and eventful life of challenges, uh, business career in the fight business. Um, you know, being a teacher, a student, very strong and agile, uh, red cat because of his red hair. So uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any videos of him fighting uh, that would have been a lot more interesting. So if you have anything else to add, please. Let me know down below. Also, please do not forget to go into the description below and check out simonbjj.com for the articles and, of course, the t-shirts. If you have anything else to add, let me know. This was Shadi, and as always, thank you for listening.